When Rasputin first arrived at Whispering Rocks, he was at a remedial level in regards to developing his psychic abilities. While he did have great potential, he had not yet learned how to fully make use of them. Because of this, when Sasha 9 invited him to test out the Brain Tumbler, the boy could only get so far before reaching a roadblock. On two separate occasions, Sasha was forced to evacuate Raz from the experiment so that he could receive training on the Side Blast and Levitation abilities. Now that we have taken a look at the two mines where he learned these techniques, let's go back to the beginning and deep dive into the Brain Tumbler experiment itself. The machine is intended to allow the user to enter his or her own psyche. Before reaching it, Raz is brought to a small section of the collective unconscious. Sasha explains that this is a part of the astral plane where all minds are joined. Once an individual develops a mental link with another, they are able to use this place to traverse minds. While the writers take liberties with this definition of the collective unconscious, it has some relevance to the mental world Raz explores while in the Brain Tumbler. In an essay by Carl Jung entitled The Structures of the Unconscious, he takes the time to discuss the differences between the personal unconscious and the collective unconscious. Each mental world seen up until now are examples of the personal unconscious, as they are unique to the individual. It contains things that at one point were conscious, but have either been forgotten or repressed. This personal unconscious is a reflection of our environment and contains everything that happens to us in our lives. Every thought, emotion, and trauma we have suffered is forever ingrained there, just like every stroke of paint on a canvas remains there even if it is painted over. The collective unconscious, according to Jungian philosophy, is not a product of the individual mind, but something more primal, innate to the collective human psyche. It contains archetypes and instincts universal to all those of the same culture or species, something we are born with. Within Psychonauts, the term collective unconscious is redefined to represent the nexus point where multiple personal unconscious minds meet. The Brain Tumbler experiment goes along with this theme as it shows what can happen when the psyche of multiple individuals cross paths. Upon entering, Raz finds himself in a shadowy environment with a gypsy caravan. This is the same location where he first meets Ford Kroller at the beginning of the story. He confirms that the caravan is where he was born, metaphorically the seed of his identity. Outside is a mental vault entitled Rasputin's Getaway. It shows his life in a traveling circus, where a mysterious figure hands him a pamphlet for Whispering Rock's psychic summer camp. The identity of this individual is still unknown. Eventually, Augustus finds Raz reading it and tears it apart. This causes Raz to run away from home to the summer camp. It's interesting he starts on the outside, mentally detached from the caravan, the symbol of his entire world up until this moment. The door to the caravan has static over it, and upon entering, Raz finds himself inside of a small white space. After breaking free, it is revealed he was trapped inside of a large egg. This is where the Brain Tumbler experiment begins. The first thing he sees is a white rabbit staring at him. It begins to hop away, hearts around its head, and seemingly invites Rasputin to follow it. Other than being an obvious allusion to the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland, we have seen Mr. Bun before, in Coach Oleander's mind. In the white room at the end, these images were carved into the walls. Tim Schafer later confirmed this is a dream version of the bunny young Oleander grew attached to. We will discuss what happens more once we reach the final mindscape. But for now, let's say it symbolizes the youthful innocence of Coach Oleander's psyche. It appears that even though he is bent on world domination, his inner child wants to help Raz get answers. As I'm sure anyone can tell, and Raz even comments on it, this doesn't feel like Raz's mind. The level design does not reflect a circus scenario in any form. Instead, it is a linear path with vines and thorny bushes everywhere. The first set of figments here show these thorny brambles. Egg and hatching chicken figments are found here as well. Considering Raz just hatched out of an egg himself, this is significant. Other figments show pieces of meat to match the meat plants growing from the earth. Back in Coach Oleander's basic braining, Lily was fascinated by a meat flower growing from the ground. She mentions that she has been seeing it in her dreams. 
We discussed then that an aspect of his psyche was cracking through the mental world, but here, he doesn't care about hiding it. It can be assumed at this point that things are not right. At the top of the hill, Raz is confronted by a shadowy figure that proceeds to attack him. Just as Sasha is pulling him out, he comments that he is receiving interference from another mind. Based upon the meat, we know exactly who it is. Through the brain tumbler, Raz is tuning into the unconscious signals from Oleander's mind. Later, it is revealed that the radio back at the kids' campground can transmit thought. Conveniently, this is where Oleander fell asleep and was broadcasting his attention everywhere. After learning Psyblast, Raz returns to the experiment where he easily defeats the demon and enters the second section of this thorny path. From here on forward, sensors which were absent before defeating the demon flood out and attack the boy. The reason for this will be discussed in the next video. This path is similar to the first, but the hatched chicken figments roam the halls and fern-like plant figments grow from the ground. Before entering the tower chamber, we see a series of new figments. A bell, an anchor, a boat, and a fish. Right above them is a bathtub with the words Amblangata written on the side. Between these and the underwater fern figments, Oleander's mind is drawing comparisons to the journey across Lake Amblangata, which neighbors the summer camp. Earlier on in the story, we learn that on the other side of the lake is Thorny Tower's home for the disturbed. So what is on the other side of this bathtub? A giant tower covered in thorns and wearing a straight jacket. This is where the level design drops any degree of being subtle and becomes explicit. A cutscene plays showing Dogen captured by Dr. Lobato inside the tower. The conversation gives us our goal to rescue him before the mad doctor lobotomizes him. Before climbing the tower, we see a few new figments that are unique to this area. The first is a series of flying brains that float around the base of the tower. The rest are four unique figments that don't appear anywhere else. They are a carton of milk, a thistle, a Napoleonic hat, and a purple bull. These all represent the patients currently residing inside Thorny Towers. Boyd Cooper, Gloria Von Guten, Fred Bonaparte, and Edgar Teagley. The mental vault here is called The World Shall Taste My Eggs, and comes off as completely random. It shows the journey of some hatchlings. First, the eggs hatch and a baby chick walks over to the water before being carried across by a fish to an amusement park. After jumping in the spinning teacups, they begin to shoot lasers, burning the park and the people inside to ash. While this slideshow comes off as gibberish, it details every step of the coach's plan. The eggs represent the campers. The chickens inside are the brains that he is stealing. The fish is Linda the Lungfish, who resides in the lake. The amusement park is Thorny Towers, and the teacups are the psychic death tanks. In short, the brains are stolen, Linda takes them across Lake Amblangata, and the plan is to use them to power Oleander's arsenal. This was first foreshadowed when Raz left the cabin area to the main lodge. If one climbs up on a radio tower, the coach begins to broadcast over the speaker, talking in his sleep. Got to find the eggs. Careful with the eggs. Don't drop the eggs under the water. Give the eggs to you know who. Can't decorate a cracked egg. Put those eggs in their holders. Then they'll see. They'll all see. When my eggs break, they'll spread all over the world. Sunny side up. At this point, Raz climbs the tower but is stopped halfway up. Learning that he is unable to levitate, Sasha pulls him out and instructs him to return once he can. Down by the lake, Mia Vodello is teaching a class on levitation, which Raz quickly masters before returning to the lab. Floating to the top, he witnesses Dogen losing his brain before it's tossed down a trash chute. In another room, Lily is tied up, ready for her visit with the Mad Doctor. Down in the basement room, tank blueprints are on the walls, and Dogen's brain is tossed into the image, merging with the tank inside. After destroying the weapon, Raz is transported to the white room inside Oleander's mind. It is only now that he realizes who is behind everything. 
Being the first mental world after discovering the collective unconscious, it is appropriate that the mindscape is twisted and shows influence from multiple individuals. Sasha explains that the doors open as the young psychedelic develops mental links with others. Through the process of experience taking, sometimes we adopt characteristics of those we are closest to. Whether it be with someone you have known for years or your significant other, we unknowingly take on idiosyncrasies of others. I'm sure all of us have heard someone say, we spend too much time together, when commenting on how similar two individuals have become. While Raz has only known Oleander for a day, he has entered and wandered around his mind. Ultimately, the best way to know someone is to see their inner world. On occasion, it can become hard to distinguish what comes from your mind and what comes from theirs. Raz experiences this while walking down the thorny path. One line of dialogue that goes along with this is when he calls the white rabbit Mr. Bun. Young Oleander always called it Mr. Bunny. Without realizing it, Rasputin gave a similar nickname due to the unconscious signals from Oleander's mind influencing him. We see this concept on greater display later when we meet Edgar Teagley. However, before arriving at Thorny Towers, Raz must confront the hulking lungfish of Lake Omblongata.